Hi folks, Ray here, your friendly neighborhood nerd. Last time we installed a Debian uh, machine from scratch. And uh, today I'd like to put it to good use. Um, what about installing a game server? There is a handy tool called the Linux Game Server Manager we're gonna use. And uh, well, let's do it. Follow me guys. As you see, we are here on the Linux Game Server Manager's homepage. Uh, link will be down in the description, so no worries about that. And if you click here on servers, you see that they support currently about 117 servers. And that's number still to change, so can be more all the time. And if you go down the list, you see Call of Duty. I've already spotted Factorio, Half-Life, no, even Rust is in the list, so if you want to host your own server, so why not do it for your LAN party? I mean, it's as easy as that. I decided to do an ARC server today, ARC Survival Evolved, and uh, we can do it using Debian. So, let's see, uh, we just need a couple of packages here, and uh, I've got our machine already loaded up, and I'm gonna just copy this package requirements. Here is our Debian machine. I used Putty to log into that machine so I can easily copy and paste. If I, um, as I'm root, I don't need the sudo uh, here. So I'm gonna trim that away. And uh, let's see what this command gives me. It downloads stuff, that's good, that's very good. And uh, we're getting the dependencies installed. Oh, and there is a package which isn't needed anymore. That's, that's pretty obsolete. So that's from an old Debian version. So we can just safely drop that one. Um, mind, we are on Debian 11 here. And it asks us nicely if we want to install it. And we say happily yes. It's rolling along. And um, we've, we're nearly done with the dependencies. The rest is gonna be handled by the script. Now, the very important part is you do not want to run your game server as root. Running software as root is in general, a little bit about security concern here. So I'm gonna drop back as my user. And as you see from the prompt here, the hashtag is always root. And uh, the dollar sign on Debian is the user. So make sure we're working with the dollar sign. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm downloading this script. And uh, let's go over the command, what it does. So uh, vget is just, you know, a downloader, just like we did with curl. Uh, Linux GSM SH is a script and we're going to make it executable and run it through the shell. <clears throat> Let's do it. And there we got it. And we can now execute it and tell it to install the Arc server. It will now fetch its dependencies and stuff from the GitHub repository. So GitHub, yes, this is an open source thing, which makes it great to hack into and do various things. Once the script is finished, it says, uh, well, continue. And uh, we say, yeah, sure. And it will create missing directories, give us something like a blank uh, configuration. That's good. That's working. It looks for if there are any missing things. And uh, yep, it misses the lib SDL here. So no big deal. As it is missing the dependency here, we can just install it as root with uh, apt install. So that shouldn't be much of an issue. Uh, mind, we are using the um, not 64-bit. We are using the 32-bit version here because of some software 
problems. Uh, in fact, it's Steam Command not being 64 bit. And we can re retry. That should go now without an arrow. Did I say arrow? Arrow in the knee jokes. Here I come. <clears throat> All righty. Now it shouldn't. Yep, there we go. We've got it all installing Steam Command. Steam Command is the command line client used for Steam stuff. So that way we can fetch the server directly from Steam, which is a good thing because, um, you know, it's just a one liner. It's a no brainer then. And you don't want to spend a lot of time managing your server. You want to spend most of your time playing. A Steam command should be installed soon-ish. And the script is still working. You know, it's all downloading the updates. And uh, this time, as you see, it looks like it is already pulling in the Arc server. It could be anything like your Rust server, you know, all you want to have, look at the page. As you probably noticed, this script might take a while to run, so I advise you to get you a refill of your coffee or whatever, and come back when it's finished. And so do we. So, while we are waiting on the install to finish, there is something I'd want to address with you. And this is security. As a matter of fact, if you're running stuff as an administrator, it's got all the permissions. It could even kill a kid. So it can really do everything to your machine, like installing new software, um, you know, shutting it down, deleting everything, whatever. It's an administrator. So this is why we run stuff as an everyday user, which is a user who has limited permissions. In other words, if something goes sideways, they won't have full control. Always remember, even a game server is still a crappy piece of software, which is not bug free. <coughs> An eternity later. Um, well, the script is finished and um, as Steam command can be quite a bugger, they make sure to ask you if the install was successfully. And uh, as we see here, it says success. So yeah, let's confirm that. And uh, now it gets the basic config. And there we go. Do we want to give them some data? I usually answer this question with no, because I value my privacy. And there we go. Now we can start the arc server. But wait, there is more. If you look at the documentation, you can see all the commands and what they are doing. And the interesting part here is really, if you just type in arc server, it will show you what you can do. Now, if you are like me and you want to go, you know, on a vacation or shopping without being disturbed by your players while the server is down, I would advise you to use a cron job. We do that by typing cron tab minus E, which is edit my cron tab. And for an editor, I would recommend using nano if you're a beginner or if you have some VI experience or prefer VI, well, whatever rocks your boat, then take two. The cron job is a nifty thing here and I'll just copy those cron jobs as well an example and we'll modify them so that they work for us. First of all it is on the wrong path for me so I'm gonna correct that for you. And um, the first cron job it runs every five minutes and checks 
if the Arc server is still alive and kicking. This means if the server is down, it gets restarted. So worst uh, crash, worst scenario is that you have to wait five minutes for it to be restarted. Every 30 minutes, it checks if there is an update out. And if there is an update, it will do so. And, um, you know, once a week, midnight, we'll check for the update. And now this is the fun part here. This just reduces the output to zero. It just dumps it. So uh, this is just for saving you a lot of uh, mails sent by the crone demon if you set up email. But um, if you're like me, I usually use crony to uh, filter the outputs and see if things went okay or not. If I save that, crone tab is immediately in effect and we can start the Arc server after some basic configuration. As a little bonus here, you can always install htop to monitor your server while it's loading. In my case, I know my Arc server is currently doing some Steam updates because I allowed it to manage the mods. Hopefully it goes okay, but I don't doubt it. Now all I have to do is wait for the server to actually come up and then I'll show you how to connect. And this is done by using the Steam client. There we go. And uh, you've got the view menu on top and there is a menu item called servers. This is where you usually find all the servers on the internet and if you go to your favorites you can always add a server by add a uh, server, enter the IP and the port 27015 if it's the default port you're using depending on your config. To show you that this is working I just fired up my Arc server and um, the Arc game here. So I click on join Arc and uh, I make sure I select my session filter favorites and there we are Victoria's Secret which is my server and uh, I'm off playing some Arc now. I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and uh, well I would appreciate if you would leave a like or even subscribe to the channel to not miss out on new videos. If you've got any questions or feedback feel free to leave a comment. I would appreciate that and I even react to them in future videos. If you want to catch me live, uh, there is a chance I'm streaming on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays and even Sundays around 5 p.m. on Twitch, Central European time. So that's it for today and I'm gonna sign off and hug some dinos. See ya!